Our next guest, well, he's a lawyer, he's an activist, he's an author. Please welcome Shattered Images author, Brian Cuban, to the stage. See how much quicker he got to the stage? He's prima donnas I got to work with over here. <laughs> Not you, Brian. Am I, am I in trouble if I say I'm a Steelers fan? Ooh. Uh, not today, no. you're not. <laughs> no. <laughs> not not every Monday for us. <laughs> we, don't, we don't play the Steelers, so. Yeah. Why would Sorry, you want to do that? Born and raised in Pittsburgh. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Hey, we got to have our allegiances to somewhere, right? They got, um, now, they got you've had a lot of great things going on also. You're a big Mavs fan, obviously, if you yeah. didn't know. Mark Cuban, uh, his brother, happens to own the Mavericks, and we'll get into that a little later. But tell us a little bit about some of the inspiring work you've been doing with your new book and, and, and being an activist for body images for everyone across the country. Sure. Well, I, I wrote a book about uh, recovering from uh, drug addiction and eating disorders. Uh, to give you a little bit of a history, there it is, Shattered Image. I was an alcoholic by 21, a drug addict by 27, a steroid addict by 30. Uh, I, I was bulimic for 25 years. Yes, guys, do get eating disorders. Yeah. And as all the guys go, whoa, yeah, it's not <laughs> contagious. <laughs> and, uh, and I was suicidal by 45, and I was able to overcome all that. And I decided to write a book about it. And now I travel the country speaking to college students about how to overcome addiction and how to love their bodies, and whether they're men or women, and to love themselves. Well, so they don't a, go through what I went through. It's such a huge issue. Now, your journey is obviously a tough journey, but now you've come full circle, and I've read some of the uh, captions, and I haven't read the whole thing, but read some, uh, skimmed through it a little bit, and you provide some comic relief for an easy read. I do, I do. I mean, I, it's that you, when you've been through something like that, you have to look back on it and see the humor in it as part of your recovery. I mean, when I talk to kids, I'll throw in, you know, well, I've also been married three times. One more, and I get a free set of steak knives. <laughs> you have to turn it into something positive because you can't look back and just dwell on a black hole that was your life. Yeah. And I get so impa impassioned about letting kids know, especially high school and college, that you can experience bad times and you can experience negative body image, but you can pull yourself out of it and what I try to teach them is something I call Eve. I teach them empathy. You know, when this goes to bullying, I was bullied severely in a high school over my weight. I was a heavy kid. And we teach our kids empathy. We have to teach our kids to have empathy for those who are different from us and stand up for those who are different from us. Definitely. We have to educate our kids on what it is to have good body image. We have to empower them to speak up for others. And we have to give them voice to do the same. So... They won't, you know, so when they see kids getting bullied over their weight, they'll say that's not right and stand up for them. A negative body image can relate to back to so many different things. There's a saying that genetics loads the gun, environment pulls the trigger. Yeah. So people can be, people can grow up having predispositions to eating disorders, to addiction, to negative body image, and go through a number of different things in life that could be, that could trigger them, different environmental triggers. What a lot of people don't know is we, we associate eating disorders with women. Right. I mean, we just do. That's the conversation. But 30% of all those who suffer from eating disorders are, in fact, men. Wow. That's a men just don't want to talk about it. It's a staggering number. I, I'll, take your, I'll take your word for it. Your brother obviously owns the math, so you got to... <laughs> <laughs> I wore my good luck ring. You're elite. There you go. Those guys, these guys right here know nothing about what a world champion ring looks like. Watch, watch it, Tony. Watch it. <laughs> well, tell us what you think about the match this year. You got Tyson Chandler I'm really back. Excited. You got Chandler now, Parsons, a little heavy, but he's here too. Now, well, now that we're past Chubby Gate, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm really excited about the season. Uh, Chubby Gate. I think Chandler is going to take it to a, a whole new level. I think Tyson's going to be, you know, the same guy he was when he was with us. And I'm expecting, uh, you know, a top four seat. Yeah. Oh, top four seed. I like it. You can join us again and talk Mavs again.